The JSEA has failed an attempt to block the issuing of an operating license to a rival boss. JSE has lost its urgent application to have rival ZARX's new stock exchange license suspended. The Financial Services Board granted the new South African operational exchange ZARX a license on August the 31st. The JSE had launched an urgent application for interim relief, arguing that the creation of the new ZAR stock exchange would cause harm to the financial system of the country and its investors. The JSE had launched the application while it awaited a hearing of its appeal against the Financial Services Board's decision in August to grant this license. The Board is still to hear the JSE's appeal against the issuing of ZARX license, and the JSE had successfully approached the appeal board to suspend ZAR's previous conditional license. And joining us to make sense of it is uh, Pietri from Herenia Capital Advisors, and that's Pietri Riedelonghuis. Welcome, Pietri Riedelonghuis. How are you? Bye, thank you, and bye, good. Can I get a name of kennis, man? So it just makes sense of all of this. The JSC obviously being the monopoly mm. in this space, not wanting competition. We have Altex that were in this space as well. What, what is the problem particularly uh, with uh, Zarex? Well, I think uh, just to, to explain, Altex was a part of the JSC. So it was the alternative exchange board that was run and operated by the JSC. So it wasn't really competition. It was just the way that uh, smaller companies could get to market. Uh, so now Zarex is coming to market as well and uh, on the 31st of August a second license was also uh, granted to For Africa Exchange uh, which is another competitor uh, which is also uh, a license ap you know, approval that the JSC is appealing um, and it's just basically you know I think they're citing that it could cause harm to the financial ser services sector within South Africa um, but I think in it's the sense that it would be a disruption because obviously investors might migrate to Zarex and, and not necessarily Look, on the JSE. Yes, basically. And I think it's just the case they are sort of uh, dominant in the space and they have a monopoly over the exchange in South Africa and they want to keep it that way. Yeah, but I mean, we're told that uh, monetary policy is second to none. It's renowned around the world and uh, that this competition is essential, if for nothing else, to create more diversity and, and options for investors. Correct. And also to, uh, to bring down the, the, the costs of, of trading, essentially, or doing transactions of this type of nature, buying and selling shares. So I think, uh, you know, I think the concerns that they have around whether or not it's going to cause harm to the financial system are probably, uh, I'm sure they have their reasons, but from my perspective, I think that a little bit of healthy competition is probably good. Um, and it might be an opportunity for smaller companies to be able to list their shares um, and create a few more opportunities for, for investors who perhaps don't uh, have the, the big larger, bucks. you know, the big bucks, if you want to put it that way, to invest in in some companies uh, on the JSE because it can be quite onerous for you. You know, if you if you want to start getting involved, it only really makes sense if you start buying uh, long-term shares or investments in chunks of fifty thousand. So, so yeah. How will this now help in transforming the, the, the market, if you will, or the sector, by allowing uh, more diverse players to get into the space? Because as you're saying, if you want to invest in a blue chip company, you, you better make sure that you've got deep pockets. So how will this assist in getting more active uh, trading uh, to the general community? Well, it's just really going to give you a second option. So there are options which you can... Um that you have at your disposal now if you don't have the big bucks that you can do small monthly investments in things like ETFs and so on uh, or unit trusts or funds uh, there is also a company called um, Easy Equities that are making uh, investments available through the JSC for, for very low cost uh, and for very small amounts which is fantastic by, by spreading it into the, into the broader market to the everyday guy on the street that might not, be, that might not have the deep pockets to invest in, in big companies. Uh, however you know, having a second exchange, I think, just adds competition and brings prices down. And, you know, exchanges now have to add a bit of value in order to attract business and attract listings onto their, onto their exchange. So I think from, a, from an overall perspective, you know, if there are uh, companies competing against one another for, for flow or for listings and trading activity, uh, I only think that it could benefit, you know. Yeah. Are we likely to see more initial public offerings, as you were saying, because in this space you're not necessarily required to be a multi-billion Iran conglomerate or multinational, for that matter. Are we likely to see that? Uh, I think that it, they might attract a couple of smaller companies listing. Um, I'm not 100% sure exactly what the uptake is yet. I was having a look at their website uh, earlier today and, you know, there's a, there's a big process for, uh, you know, what you need to do in order to, in order to list. 
um, but you know they're not yet actually operational. Active. Yeah, I'm just um, jumping the gun. Yeah. So, but I think that you know hopefully we do see we do see some some of the smaller companies coming up and listing. Um, instead of, as you say, you have these big, massive corporations. You see, what happens in the United States and in other places in the world as well is you have regional exchanges. So, for example, uh, there's a Chicago Board of Exchange or there's an exchange in, in California. So and you, then you, of course yeah, you the, localize it, yeah. You localize it, yeah. So we could perhaps see an exchange uh, for just Gauteng and companies within Gauteng uh, or within KwaZulu-Natal or in the Western Cape or wherever the case is. So that kind of development, I think, would be, would be the next natural step for our financial services sector uh, in South Africa to grow into. Um, right now, you know, saying that there's, there's not a big enough market for competition is perhaps not the right attitude. Perhaps what we need to do is create the market in order to foster competition. Yeah. And I think that is what Zarex is trying to do. Who are, who are they? You said you looked at their website. Who's Zarex? Well, they're just basically a small company that's, that's started up, you know. So... Um, They've they've obviously met the the onerous uh, capital and uh, in, you know information system requirements that is that is needed in order to hold the license. I mean it's quite it's not an easy thing to get. Mm. Um, also you know there's massive guarantee funds that need to be that need to be held so that investors funds are safe and if anything goes wrong the exchange will then step up. So they are a company that's essentially started out and they have managed to raise the capital and and get the. The infrastructure they need and they are hopefully the, the competition. Yeah, so when does the bell chime then? When do they? Uh, I'm not 100% sure what the timeline is for when the when the bell will chime and when they will start. Um, mm. You know, I know that now applications are open for people who want to be brokers and for people who want to list uh, and also for potential investors to start registering uh, and getting uh, getting involved in the in the exchange, uh, so we'll see exactly what happens. I think we still need to get through this appeal uh, for the, the, the uh, that the JSC has done to the FSB. Um, but you know, hopefully, we'll start seeing it, or we'll see it sometime next year. Okay, uh, Pietri, we're going to have to leave it there. That's Pietri. Pietri Riedelanghais from Herenia Capital Advisors talking to us about the new kid on the block, Zarex. Of course, it's a story that we'll be following very closely here on Bursense.